Thank you. Thank you. The next item of business is the Member's Business Debate on Motion 5734 in the name of Murdo Fraser on the MOD coming back to Perth. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those members who wish to speak to please press the request to speak buttons. Uh, I would ask those members, uh, of, in the, those people in the gallery who uh, came along to hear our proceedings, to please leave the chamber quickly and quietly, because we are now uh, uh, actively moving on to our next item of business. I would also advise members that headphones are available at the back of the chamber for members who wish to listen to simultaneous interpretation of contributions uh, in our debate today in uh, Gaelic. Also, members who are on blue jeans listening to our proceedings will hear the simultaneous uh, interpretation. So I will begin the debate by calling on Murdo Fraser to open the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Mr Fraser. Well, thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I start by thanking all members from across the Chamber who signed my motion to allow it to be debated this afternoon. Uh, as colleagues will be aware, the Royal National Mod is an annual event that celebrates the best of Gaelic music and culture. This year's Mod took place in the city of Perth, where I live and have the honour of representing as part of the Mid-Scotland and Fife region uh, over the course of the last week. This was the first time the Mod had been held in Perth since 2004, and I can remember visiting events uh, at the Mod on that previous occasion. Because of COVID restrictions, this was the first full in-person mod that had been held in three years, and it was very well supported. The event closed on Saturday with a masked choir event outside Perth Concert Hall, with more than 1,000 people taking part. And although I was not able to be present myself, from what I hear, it was a very impressive occasion. Over the course of the nine-day event in Perth, around 2,100 participants took part, in a total of 200 competitions. There was a substantial economic boost to Perth from the event, with around 7,000 people thought to have visited the city, adding up to a very significant financial contribution to the local economy in excess of a million pounds. The wide appeal of the mod was shown by thousands of people, including many from overseas, also watching the events online. James Graham, who is Chief Executive of Anne uh, Common Gaelic described the joy of having Gaels once again able to showcase the language uh, and culture and praised Perth for its fantastic venues, welcoming community and picturesque streets. There was not a hotel room to be had anywhere in the city and bars and restaurants were buzzing with performers, their families and spectators. It was a great occasion uh, for Perth and the surrounding area. One of the many participants in the MOD was Councillor John Duff, who, as well as being Conservative Group Leader on Perth and Kinross Council, is also the Council's Gaelic Medium Education Champion. John sang as part of the Aberfeldy Gaelic Choir, and anyone who knows him will recognise what a fine singing voice he has. And I know that uh, Councillor Duff is keen to see Perth become a regular venue for the MOD, and I hope this is something that Perth and Kinross Council will support, and I understand from him he is bringing a motion to the Council to that effect in the very near future. Certainly all the feedback I heard from last week suggests that the event venues, the accommodation and the general ambience of the city made it a very attractive place to host the MOD again in the near future. The MOD is organised by uh, Anne Cummin Gaelic, a charity established in Oban in 1891 and which ran the very first MOD there the following year. It is an organisation which exists to promote Gaelic language and culture, and the MOD is its annual showcase. Anne Common is supported by a small annual grant from Bordna Gaelic of around £100,000. And given the importance of the MOD to Gaelic culture, I hope that this annual grant will be at least maintained, if not increased. Indeed, uh, I believe there is a strong case for Creative Scotland looking at how an event such as the MOD uh, can be supported. Uh, better in future. It is, as I mentioned earlier, an event that has an international audience and is an excellent promotion for Scotland around the world. And I hope that Creative Scotland would see it in that light. All this comes at a time, uh, presiding officer, when there are real concerns about the future of the Gaelic language. Recent figures suggest a decline in the number of Gaelic speakers. 
While we have seen in recent years an expansion of Gaelic medium education, popular with parents in many parts of the country, many schools currently struggle to recruit suitably qualified teachers. In some local authorities, there is a reluctance to introduce Gaelic medium education, even where there is a demand from parents. And I would like to see the Scottish Government consider what additional support they might give to local authorities to encourage the development of Gaelic medium education. Now, I know that there are some on the fringes of Scottish politics who believe we should not be supporting Gaelic. That is certainly not my view, nor is it the view of my party. Indeed, the uh, then Scottish office under Michael Forsyth had an excellent record in supporting Gaelic back in the 1990s with financial support that created the Gaelic Broadcasting Committee, which led to the launch of BBC Alba. Subsequent governments have supported Gaelic in different ways, but it is clear there is much more to be done, given the state of the language at the present time. While events such as the MOD are excellent showcases of Gaelic language and culture, I don't want to see Gaelic just become a language that is restricted to the arts. If Gaelic is to have a future, it has to be the language of the school, the home and the workplace. And that is going to require significant leadership from government and public agencies at all levels. Simply rebranding public service vehicles and erecting Gaelic road signs will be no more than a gesture if the number of Gaelic speakers across Scotland continues to decline. And that is a challenge that needs to be urgently addressed. Presiding officer, the MOD will move to Paisley uh, for next year, and I hope it will be every bit of a success there, as it has been in Perth over the past week. There was a survey of those attending the Loch Haber mod in 2017, which found that 93 per cent of respondents agreed that it had made a significant or very significant contribution to having the opportunity to use Gaelic, while 94 per cent of respondents agreed that the mod made a significant or very significant contribution to learning to speak Gaelic. That just demonstrates the importance of this annual event to what is such a significant part of Scottish heritage and culture, and I hope that the MOD will go from strength to strength in future years. Presiding Officer, Moran Tang. Thank you, uh, Mr Fraser. Uh, we will now move to the uh, uh, backbench speeches, and I call Jenny Minto to be followed by Ros McCall. Ms Minto, around four minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I congratulate uh, Marjo Fraser in securing this debate, recognising the importance of the Royal National Mod and Gaelic to Scotland's economy and also to its culture. I too would like to congratulate Anne Common for the fantastic work it does to support and promote the Scots Scottish Gaelic language and culture at local, national and international levels. The Gaelic language and culture are at the heart of Scotland, and the Mod exemplifies this. Mixing song, music, poetry, art and storytelling, there is something for everyone. Providing a place for folk to meet and compete, learn and teach, laugh and cry, and perhaps even put the world to rights over a wee dram. People making connections through culture. I have been to many mods, never as a competitor, unlike my colleague Dr Allen, always very much behind the scenes working for BBC Scotland's Gaelic Department, which provides a comprehensive television and radio coverage. The 1994 mod in Dunoon, in my own constituency, was my first, and at the eight or so other mods I have been to, I have driven winners to locations to be filmed for Janish, sat in numerous competitions from choirs to Bible readings, laughed at action songs, and perhaps even put the world to rights over a couple of drams. Today, I'd like to share the mod memories of a good friend of mine, Jake McMillan. We were reminiscing about Perth mod memories when we met on Isla 10 days ago. Jake grew up on Isla. He was a member of the Ardbeg Junior Choir, and the mod was always looked upon as a big adventure, possibly more to do with the chance of exploring the local woolies as opposed to showing off his singing skills. But for the Perth Mod in 1963, the Ardbeg Junior Choir entered the action song, which was a pretty new concept at that time. The choir had much fun raiding their parents' clothes for bodic hats and scarves and kalyak shawls. Everyone was given specific parts in the wee play which colour, coloured the Gaelic song Buen Narenech, or Cutting the Bracken. Jake doesn't remember much about the competition apart from winning, despite, as he says, their Isla Gaelic. 
but his one vivid memory is of the evening children's concert at the old Perth City Hall, which was televised. Jake was fascinated by the large television camera with a wire coming out of it, being wheeled in and out in front of the stage. Who could have predicted back then that the wee Lagavulin Balach would end up back in that hall 41 years later in 2004 as the BBC engineering manager in charge of all the technical aspects of getting the Maud Gaelic transmissions for that year's Maud on air. So in 1963, Ardbeg Junior Choir won and I, this year, I'm very pleased to say that Argyll and Buttes performers have done well too, with the Oban Gaelic Choir winning the prestigious Lovett and Tally Barden, and also the achievements of the Gaelic learners in Monday's comp competitions from Argyll and Butte. And in the inaugural year of the Highland Art Prize, judged by Isla's own and BBC Alba presenter Heather Dewar, David Page of Mull won with his artwork, Drift. However, the mod is so much more than winning. It's a celebration of culture and language that's at the heart of Scotland. Presiding officer, I am pleased that the Scottish Government continues its support for the Gaelic language and culture, and if I may take this opportunity to add my support to the calls of parents in my constituency for a Gaelic medium school in Oban. The numbers are there, and the work has been done on a public study, which shows great community support. So I would ask the Cabinet Secretary if he could speak with his colleague, the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Skills, that she agree in principle that Borna Gaelic and Argyll and Butte Council work together to produce a plan for a school in the lifetime of the Council's Gaelic plan. As I've previously said in this chamber, children are our future, but they're also our here and now, and they are integral to Gaelic language and culture. There is nothing more thrilling and emotional as hearing the Gaelic anthem Canon and Gael sung by the Gaelic choirs at the Maud, the language of the Gaels. We must continue to celebrate and support that language. Thank you, Ms Minto. I now call Ros McCall to be followed by Claire Baker. Uh, around four minutes, please, Ms, Ms McCall. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. <laughs> Firstly, following protocol, but uh, with absolute sincerity, I congratulate my colleague Murdo Fraser on bringing this motion to the Chamber. I had hoped to start off my initial statements in the beautiful dulcet tones of the Gaelic language, but after many, many days of trying and failing and providing continual uh, amusement to my husband, I concluded I should not offend the people I was trying and attempting to praise. I am delighted to join in and pass on my congratulations to Perth and Kinross Council, the organisers and Coman Gaiolich, and all the participants of the Royal National Ma Maud for what was a fantastic display of all things Gaelic. This year's Maud was the tenth time Perth has hosted the festivities, a number only surpassed by Glasgow, Inverness and its traditional home of Oban. The cultural experience Perth offers focuses on Scotland as it sits in the country's metaphorical and geographical heart, a fact highlighted by the work done to regenerate Perth City Hall into a modern museum of Scottish history, which will become the permanent residence for the Stone of Destiny, and I think we can agree this is a fitting legacy for the blend of traditional and contemporary that we want to see in a thriving modern Scotland. Deputy Presiding Officer, I was on uh, administration councillor when Perth and Kinross were bidding for the event, and I was delighted when it was awarded. I know how much work was put in by the officers and staff within the council and the support and backing given by the then council leader to secure the festivities, and I want to go on record once again uh, to congratulate the sterling effort put in to make it happen. I'm sorry to say that when the process was going through the award stages, I have to admit of being ignorant to the full extent of the Royal National Mod. My Gaelic and Scots knowledge was entirely based on my own experiences going through my formative years. And unfortunately, Thing Me Jig, reruns of the White Heather Club, paying strassbees and reels on the fiddle and learning to dance male parts at Scottish country dancing because I was tall and the class had a distinct lack of boys an issue which made for a very interesting first dance at my wedding, but that's another story, were hardly a comprehensive education on the subject. As much as we have experienced the joys and delights that have been mentioned, and I want to highlight a concern raised by the President of Anne Coman Gaelch on the number of young entrants this year. The repercussions of COVID restrictions have again raised their ugly head. The lingering uncertainties of COVID, teachers and pupils not attending school buildings, 
requires not being able to meet in practice and the overall reduction in sports and activities at that time have created a general drop in attendance and unfortunately this has meant a drop in young participants. <clears throat> it would be a travesty if numbers continued to decline. I want to echo the sentiments of the Chairman and I sincerely hope that the success of the MOD in Perth will inspire young people not only to come back but to encourage more young people to try shinty or learn the fiddle, to sing in a choir or learn Gaelic. I just hope they manage to do it better than I did. It's important that we continue to support our traditional languages, Gaelic, Doric and Scots. And I praise the efforts that are being made to get more people, especially young people, to try and take up these languages. Conversation is paramount to language survival. We must keep promoting these skills if we have any hope of preserving our traditional tongue for future generations. And I do join with my colleagues to urge the Scottish Government to do all that it can to keep that going. The MOD, as been said, will be heard in Paisley next year. I wish them all the best and I sincerely hope to see increased numbers of young people taking that legacy forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms McCall. I now call Claire Baker to be followed by Alistair Allen. Around four minutes, please, Ms Baker. Um, thank you, President Officer. So just, uh... um, I do thank Murdo Fraser this afternoon for bringing this debate to the Chamber and join him in welcoming the return of the National Royal Mod to Perth earlier this month for its 10th time being hosted in the city. Perthshire does have a thriving Gaelic culture, which is demonstrated not only through the number of traditional groups, musicians and singers who are in the city, but also the countless community and educational groups working to inspire future generations of music lovers and performers to carry on those traditions. Returning to Perth for the first time in 14 years, across the eight-day festival, we saw 200 competitions and other events celebrating the Gaelic language, music and culture, encompassing traditional instruments, singing, poetry, storytelling, sport, literature and film. And since last hosting, we have seen the refurbishment of Perth Theatre, the opening of a new outdoor performance space at St Paul's and the opening of Perth Concert Hall, which alongside a number of other city venues showcased performances by competitors and hosted visitors from across the world. So alongside the competitive events, the Fringe programme offered a diverse programme including workshops, keelies, music sessions, open stages and literature events demonstrating that beyond the competitive disciplines, there is much to offer for people of all ages, whether they be lifelong Gaelic speakers or just looking to find out more about this cultural celebration. When we think of celebrating Gaelic culture, often our thoughts immediately turn to music, which the mod does showcase so well, from the range of choir competitions to the celebration of traditional bands. But for those unable to attend in person throughout their week, there was a lineup of fantastic singers taking part in free and informal online song sessions. We also saw performances and competitions across dance, sport and literature alongside fringe events such as concerts and a shinty fixture. It really was a celebration which was inclusive and welcoming. While celebrating the traditional, the MOD also works to promote Gaelic language and culture through new routes, demonstrating this year in the use of TikTok to showcase comedy and other short video formats in Gaelic. This year also saw the presentation of the first Highland Art Prize, celebrating another aspect of Gaelic culture, with the winner, David Page, sharing his prize with his local art organisation to help support local participation in art. And while in recent years the MOD has begun to attract a younger audience, the ability to appeal to new generations of Gaels and engage with its potential audience in new and different ways will be important to its continuing success and I'm hopeful that in coming years we will see its reach widen further. Over the eight days of its programme, the MOD not only celebrated Gaelic language and culture, but also the city of Perth itself, with 14 venues involved in hosting thousands of competitors and visitors throughout the event. Large events like this are important to the local economy, not just in bringing a significant economic benefit to the area, but also in showcasing what Perth has to offer to a wider audience. Events like this can provide valuable opportunities to connect and share experience, create memories and celebrating friendships old and new. Locals and visitors alike have spoken of the vibrant atmosphere in Perth throughout the MOD and also the great sense of community demonstrated in the work of staff and volunteers from across Perth and Can Ross who helped make the event a success. I'm interested in members' comments around the Gaelic language and Ros McCall 
you know, I, I understand that Duolingo now offers uh, Gaelic as one of its languages. There are new ways to try and learn and pick up some bits of Gaelic. And I was actually thinking, I think it was um, somebody mentioned children's TV. I remember when Dotterman came on TV, um, my little cousin used to watch that, and everybody learned Horse McCourse and various other wee bits and pieces of Gaelic, and that was quite effective to have on mainstream television. And although I think the Scotland office has been mentioned, while that has been highlighted, I do think this parliament has provided an important focus for supporting and scrutinising government support uh, for Gaelic, including you know, looking at BBC Alba, which I know the Culture Committee does focus on, and we do recognise the financial pressures that they are facing, along with many other uh, broadcasters. So I do welcome the boost to uh, culture and tourism that hosting the Royal National Mod has brought to Perth and the opportunity that staging provided uh, showed to show what the city has to offer. The, nine, the eight days were a huge success and a joyful celebration of Gaelic language and culture. I wish to congratulate all participants, staff and volunteers who contributed to the Royal National Mod in 2022 and send my very best wishes to Paisley for an equally successful event next year. Thank you, Ms Baker. I will now call Alistair Allen to be followed by Donald Cameron. I would advise that Dr Allen will be speaking in Gaelic, and therefore those who wish to hear the simultaneous translation should please plug in their headphones into the console. Dr Allen, around four minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, with your permission, can I just check that people know which channel to turn to? I, I will just seek to clarify that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Allen. Uh, it is channel number one. Okay, thank you, President Officer. Of a good really top of the show, and so here at Dolomach, go Murhook Frischel, or son a gen of Kinchoch, Ganjach and Jasper Shaw, a Hummelans of Parliament in Jew. I guess Melda Neuch, go Bala Morfiast, a good Falche Hochthiel, Edward Nash and Teriol and Bluna. Andras, Femimi, Mui Hain, a Huar, a Husper Shaw. Va mishu a shine a Olympiast ik evad en blionese, maar is avest va in the hlach ko pas de gaul ans na koarpishen le kasher as a chayas nach akem hein kasher ski de vach gan el joes, vas en kli halichte lish na duish en huidishen. Melf er naich kuchoch begorgo ra gan el hulle tinje va gaul pas ans evad en shach gan se sechai. Be a mod nation to real a tossed soul in the Gaelic, the Hela, on the Doi Horichje, She Ruchkuch Moor, a Hunsavod, Jeho Biastoch, Sahar Kulter, a Gazar Canon, Thron of Arpishan, Shine, Barstoch, Yalling, Skeloch, Drama, Kul, Dowser, a Gazimatoch Rutele, Gachblione. Be a vod nation to a shelting a Kulter, Dun a Jiffer Hoyersnochen. Even be a nice tohul, Gachblione, Agus Ankorum, Ek Alape, Ed Fat, Na Farpishich, Ashar Echen, Trahachen, about even television, no Ankloinchen, even radio. But Hulatunia, Aha, and Sas, and Sensul, about Na Farpishich, Ed Fat, Agus and Lukeshjoch Kuchoch, a Gildrin. Uh, Avod uh, Gamor for Davilis and uh, Noijig, uh, Ketavatahostas and uh, Gawalachi is Lonya and Sanetrama. Bahoma, uh, Chin Kala and Sanuachi or San Avod at East and Bluna, I guess Melver Nayak and the Homan Gael or San Narinshev, because Mod Davila is Daivichet, a young of Hosirvahan. Marel Moran Yolishakov is J. Hans of Old Nation to Agus Hojezaha Moran Yale is Inchimis Gelloch Grief, Vavod Hun Buchan Blionichan. Badunya Van Sur Lionicke is Tudus Sochke Savoch, Lishan RSPB. Reine Meroch Vorgita, or Saun of Uchkes Jach Gelanu Toyoste, the Lietus and Koshev. Eka vod. Van Trugan Shaw, a grok is Doris and Shomer and Nagoris, Ictawith and Savatin. Leshkuro and Shine is some Kelagahas, the Dal Golatir. Hude Kesch is the Fichetunia of a Hrin Kola and some Rumshun, Kershon Eacher of a Gilia Og, the Meska Shine, the Piba. Achakur Anu, Dunya, me Ostanoch, Shun, the Narna Tuv, Hatai. 
arsing on an all up in the void, I guess on the Gaelic. But then for us to ask on a piast and shakens a shakens a high, I guess how many tolish you are given and taken the taken on the parliament show kuchok, a kuchis moj and chiju, hadish in the party and maraha followshok and Jew. And yet, Maud and Turut ha Kutramok and the Gaelic, well, can you do this and be a gen of a mach gere? Le Kinch ha Gaelic on the stat Hukolok, Marava, Duniela Gra, Marshin ha Kutramok can be shown Gabrien, Hotrik, Sasurin, Green, Goliath, a Varoke Edevika Shain. Ha Dulhus Biol e Kelna Gaelic, I guess ha Maud a gen of Upper Voros and the Han and Hain. I guess Gus <laughs> noch Nagalic, a Hanin Kala Gach Bluna, Hakerst, Gavella Farlamage, a Molochon and Jew. Tapra. Thank you, Dr. Allen. And we, I now would call Donald Cameron to be followed by Emma Roddick. Around four minutes, please, Mr. Cameron. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I uh, likewise thank my colleague, Murray Fraser, for lodging this motion? Um, I, I was very disappointed uh, not to hear him give his speech in Gaelic um, and had to wait till the last uh, sentence to hear any Gaelic at all, but congratulate him on his efforts. Um, and Common in Gaelic's decision to re return to Perth for the tenth time it was wonderful to hear, uh, not only uh, for all those who then did participate in the wide variety of Gaelic language and culture over the eight days of festivities, but also for the host city of Perth, which has a deep-rooted history uh, in this festival. The MOD's promotion of Gaelic across such a vast cultural spectrum is always tremendous, and with over 200 competitions having been held, the thousands of visitors that attended were provided with a showcase I'm sure they will not forget. And all competitors and their families should be proud of the performances they gave and the depth of talent on display, including uh, Dr. Alistair Allen. Um, fans enjoyed uh, an outstanding display of poetry, music and recital, all in celebration of the Gaelic language and culture, and many travelled from far and wide to both discover or reignite a passion uh, in Gaelic culture. A special mention should go, uh, as Murdo Fraser has already um, done, to the return of the choir competitions, which were held for the first time since the Glasgow Mod in 2019. Uh, with the lifting of the COVID restrictions that prevented um, previous year's mods from holding these group events, it was wonderful to learn about that huge crowd at Perth Concert Hall, uh, where many choirs spent a tough afternoon competing for a variety of coveted trophies. This year's mod showed that the future of Gaelic culture is looking both prosperous and full of innovation. And as Claire Baker said, um, this year's mod had a TikTok competition uh, promoting the language, uh, the culture, and even Gaelic comedy. It got many hits and interactions from Gaelic speakers and others, with submissions being shared on their page targeting a new modern audience that otherwise may not have been reached. And I think that means, uh, for, for one reason among many others, we should be optimistic for the future of Gaelic culture with this further encouragement on different platforms and new mediums, allowing especially children and young adults to interact in Gaelic in a way never experienced before. Uh, it was important uh, for a city like Perth to receive the economic benefits of the MOD, uh, and that will undoubtedly support local businesses and promote the city nationally and internationally as a destination. Thanks should also be given to BBC Annapa for their impeccable coverage of the MOD throughout, another example of how that channel is a great tool in sharing Gaelic language and culture to all parts of Scotland. And common have for over a century and a quarter excelled in being the body of representation for the Gaelic language and the aims of that association of supporting and developing all aspects of Gaelic language, Gaelic culture, Gaelic history and Gaelic heritage at a local, national and international level continue to be met and surpassed by the return again of a fully fledged Royal National Mod at Perth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Cameron. And I now call Emma Roddick, who will be the last speaker before I ask the Cabinet Secretary to respond. Around four minutes, please, Ms Roddick. Tap alive, off a good really. I will warn those listening, I do not have Gaelic, but I didn't feel right talking about the MOD as a Highlands and Islands MSP in English. And I know that if the language is to live on, we need more people to use it and learn it. 
So, Hami Dulich in advance for any pronunciation mistakes. Hami Gle Holotu, a via brain, San Jesper show. Hami Era V Solur, von Tai Akam, Guvel me a cur falche, er conal tri, se Gallic. Hami Tolitche, Guvel the lavers ne Gallic, San Office Akam, Agis Hami Erson, Taika Horch, the Rory Erson, a Kuchehaig, Lyshen, Orich, Akam, and Jew. Hami Kuchich Erson, Tang a Horch, the Murdo Fraser, Erson a Jace Bacho, a Horch, and Chomer. Marachulishin ha a modna shanta riochil, called Kudramach Erson, of Roshnehig, Agis a Cochrehig, Er Canon Sarkiol. Hai er Torsh Kolalich Lavers Nagalic, Agis Dunya ek Nachil Gallic, vo er Fiat na Duche, Agis Nasacha er Falov. Na Acha fir Kudramach Ekavod, Anam Vik a Kumil, er Koyersnach in Gallic, Serabicol. Marshin va Echoma. Antakar das Eichen, a Chilach don Chakenslan, de Kohaparshen, Agis Konzertchen, Anam Peert, as de Ur de Unie, Vokilie, Erska Covid. Hami Erson and Koran Shu Agal, Erson Milanyach, a Kur Er Ahulia for Pasch Guhari e Yuen, von Gailtach Agis Nahelenin. Va e Gu Sondrache va avi a Feichen Ruri Grey. A Ursa Jess, Agus Annie Catriona MacDonald, as an Aelin Skinach, Na Vun or Kluchich a Vunachai, Hat Ruri, Er Erst Gus Vun or a Chien, Nosha Vunachai, Anala, La Alice Macmillan, Alius, Han Ilan and Ruri Achendarna, Niach a Koshin and a Vaun Achenaun Vod. Er la mu erk den arpish, hoshin kosher galic a elen jay, fostur kirsting mingus, kuach kainichen, merit nikonichi. As jay show, ho kosher galic an open, skiach vimhimi is kulach varen, fostur shila sinkler. Ha e skonyol, a laich de halent, son skira eichen er einache. Tap alive. Thank you, Ms Ruddick. And I now call on Angus Robertson, Cabinet Secretary, to respond on behalf of the Scottish Government. Around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Tabalut, uh, Presiding uh, Officer, I'd like to thank uh, Murda Fraser for bringing this debate forward and from the contribution of, of members across the Chamber. And it's, I think it's usually positive to uh, hear from all sides of the Chamber um, such a positive reflection uh, on both the Gaelic language and the Royal National Mod. And it's a privilege for me to uh, speak on behalf of the Scottish Government on the Royal National Mod's return to Perth. If I can begin um, by reflecting on the contribution of others uh, to Murdo Fraser, I agree with him entirely about the, the value of bilingualism and, and bilingual education. I say that as somebody who is fortunate enough to be bi bilingual, and I speak another language, actually my first language, with my, with my uh, own children. Uh, to, to Jenny Minto, who has a, a long track record of working in Gaelic medium, uh, broadcasting, uh, I hear what she says about the Gaelic medium education in, in Oban. She has asked me specifically, would I raise the matter with the Cabinet Secretary for education I give her in undertaking uh, to do so. Uh, to Ros uh, McCall, uh, good to hear the praise. I hope it's heard in Perth and Kin Ross to the officers of that council who have worked so hard to make it the success that it, it has been um, at the MOD. And also the encouragement for young people to speak the language. Uh, and for the wider cultural activities that are associated with Gaelic uh, culture. Uh, to Claire Baker, I, I heard her uh, calls for innovation in the promotion of, of the language being important, and Alistair Allen stood as the living embodiment um, of that uh, encouragement as, as somebody who uh, is, uh, if, in case people didn't know, is a Gaelic learner uh, and now speaks, I am well informed, impeccable uh, Gaelic, which leads me to um, my total agreement with Donald Cameron in his disappointment that his colleague uh, Murdo uh, Fraser did not make his speech in, in Gaelic. I'm sure it was just an oversight, um, and perhaps he can follow the inspiration of uh, Dr Allen, uh, and we look forward to his next speeches on the subject in, in Gaelic, and Emma Roddick's uh, contribution from somebody who is learning the language is an encouragement to us all that that is um, is an encouragement to us all that it's never to learn late to uh, to learn um, 
To the, to the national mod itself, this was, as members have uh, spoken about, the tenth time that the mod uh, had uh, been to Perth and was a, a welcome return to a full-scale event following the pandemic. I'm aware that my colleague Shirley-Ann Somerville and Deputy First Minister John Swinney attended several of the opening events which were well attended by both Gales and non-Gales alike. And I'd like to congratulate in uh, common Gaelach on its continued hard work to promote and support the use of the Gaelic language in everyday community life uh, over this time. The Royal National Mod is Scotland's premier festival celebrating its Gaelic linguistic and cultural heritage and it provides opportunities for people of all ages to perform across a range of competitive disciplines including Gaelic music and song, highland dancing, instrumental drama, sport and literature. And I echo uh, the praise for all participants and, and in particular for all medal winners. The MOD also represents an annual opportunity for Gales and non-Gales to gather and celebrate one of the key features of Scottish identity. Uh, the Royal National MOD continues to attract a great number of participants of all ages and all abilities. An amazing 7,000 attendees uh, took part uh, or visited Perth over the course of the eight days. And we should be proud of this number and the activities on, on offer. It will have brought a great boost to the Perthshire economy. The Scottish Government is proud to continue its support for the Royal National Mod. Currently, we provide £60,000, as well as uh, supporting the Gaelic Ambassador of the Year Award. And I'd like to congratulate this year's recipient, John Urquhart, who is a worthy advocate for the language. As many members will know, the Scottish Government is committed to supporting the Gaelic language. We recognise the cultural, the economic, the social value of the language to the whole of Scotland and we want to ensure that those who wish to learn and use the Gaelic language are given every opportunity to do so and I can reaffirm today the absolute commitment of the uh, Scottish Government to safeguard, to nurture and to promote the Gaelic language as one of the indigenous languages of this country. In recognition of this, we launched the Scottish Government's latest Gaelic language plan on the 14th of October, which I uh, hope will go some way to support these aims. The plan sets out our clear commitment to those who wish to engage with the Scottish Government through the medium of Gaelic, as well as making commitments to support our own staff who wish to enhance their own language skills. As many members will be aware, we came to power on a strong range of commitments to the Gaelic and indeed to the Scots languages, and we're currently seeking views on the future frameworks and support for Gaelic, and this consultation is open, um, and I would encourage everyone with an interest to respond to the consultation. I'd like to close by thanking Ancoman again for their commitment in bringing this celebration of Gaelic language and culture together. There are many positive and welcome aspects of the MOD, but I'd like to remind ourselves of two important elements. The MOD promotes the rich Gaelic cultural heritage that we have in Scotland. This must be recognised, encouraged and supported, and the MOD has a key role uh, in this. The MOD also has a key role in providing school-aged young people uh, with the opportunity to use their Gaelic and demonstrate their ability in song, in poetry, in drama. I believe we'd all recognise this as being of great value for Gaelic and for Scotland as a home. I'm also aware that Perth and Kinross Council have been keen to host the MOD for a number of years, and I think it's fitting that the first post-COVID full MOD was held in, in Perth and Kinross. This will build on the reputation of a council that has done so much to enrich the cultural life of this area and beyond. I'm sure that we will all see the economic report that will follow, and I'm sure that it will uh, show the great benefits that the Royal National Mod bring to local e economies and really demonstrating that Gaelic is for the whole of Scotland. Tapali, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the debate, and I suspend this meeting until 2 p.m. Thank you.